Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to show you how you can set up some rules or features that stop inaccurate data entry. So first of all, I want to show you how you can create a lookup list which will make sure people select from a list that you've created rather than typing their own items and maybe doing a typo. So let's have a look at the tables first of all. So in this table here, customers, I've got a list of cities. Now, if you want to deal with certain areas, uh, a finite number of cities, you can create a lookup to a table that has those cities in and then restrict that lookup to just those items. So in this database, I've just created a table called cities, which has just got, got a list of cities. So this is the, these are the cities that we deal with, say, for example. Now, from this table, I want to create a lookup that will only select those cities. You need to go into table design. You need to click onto the, the city field. Now there is a lookup wizard that you could utilize from here, down the bottom there, but I want to do this manually. So I'm going down to the very, very bottom, selecting lookup, text box, changing that to be a combo box. You've got two options there, list or combo. Going for the combo one. Is it a table or query? Yes, it is. So I can leave that on there, but you've got other options in there. Value list means you're typing it, separated by a semicolon. Field list is, means it already exists as fields in another table. Neither of those are any use. So I need to select the cities table from here. So cities, there we go. Now the option to, to limit to list is this. It's on default to no, but you can change that to yes. And that means that they cannot add their own city and it can only be from that list in that table. So if I just test this out, if I save that, go in there. So if I add somebody else, so it's already an auto number, so I don't need to put a number in there. So if, if I put Bob Jones, for example, one red road. And let's see if it picks up this. So if I say Cramlington, that should not let me type that because it's not in that list. And it's coming up with an error message telling me that. So I cannot just make up a a city that doesn't exist in this list so it's not in that list I can't have it so I can put Newcastle that'll be okay which is great so if I did actually do uh, deal with somebody in Cramlington I would have to add Cramlington to the the cities table the way it's set up at the moment so that's the first way you can restrict data input by doing a drop down list and limiting to a list another thing you can do is use rules so we've got for example their date checked and date joined. So I want to make sure the table rule for this is that you cannot put a date checked there that is before a date joined. So what I've got in there is a rule that checks this is greater or equal to that. So for example, on that one, I should better put today's date, which is a control semicolon, it let me do that. This one I can't do. So let's have a look how I've done this. If I go into design, this is the all the fields. The property sheet for the table has this rule there. Look, I'll just delete it out so you can and I'll do it again so you can see it. These three ellipses at the end there, you go on that date checked, has to be greater than or equals to date joined. That's the rule, click OK, and then underneath you can have a box coming up saying um, check date or something like that. Check date. So that'll come up if you do an error. Save that. Have a look. So if I do an error, so if I go, that's today's date. So if I go the 2nd of June 23, check date, check date. Okay. Then you put the correct date in there and it should let you do that. So that's another check you can do. Check in two, two columns, making sure the rules are correct. You can also put a rule on a field as well. If I go back into design on this, this is an individual field, so if I put a, a rule on date joined, so I click there, and then you've got your, your properties down the bottom here. There's no rule at the moment, but I can put one in there. So if I say it has to be greater than now, now's a function, which is a computer clock. Now I can't just leave it like that because I need to put like a minus one on that. Let's just see what happens there. Save that, have a look. 
It's already telling me it's breaking some of the rules, so I'll just say yes to that, yes to all these messages and have a look. So basically, if I add some new person, so I've just added Bob Jones there, so if I say he joined on the 1st of June 23, see what happens there? That's coming up with a, an error message. So it's actually showing me the, the actual message there. If I click OK and just delete that off for a minute, that's why you need to put something in the box that pops up if I go back into that. So that's the rule. Um, I'll put check date again, so that'll come up this time. It'll come up. It's going to tell me the same sort of thing again, but this time it's going to come up with that box. So if I put the 1st of June 23, comes up with that check date. So I change that to today's date, and it lets me put it in. Now, if I didn't have that minus one on there, it wouldn't let me put it in. I'd have to put it in for tomorrow. So that minus one just goes back because it's, it's the actual computer clock. Now, another method that you can use to restrict data entry, if I close this down, is in the relationship window. If I've got a database tools, relationships. So these have got like one to many relationships. So one customer can have many sales. But if I double click on that for a minute. So I've got this ticked enforce referential integrity what that's what that stops that will stop me customer in there that doesn't exist in this table so if i take that tick off for example and don't have that on i can still have the one to many join i won't get the infinity symbol but it'll still let me do it but it'll also let me create a sales id in there a customer id in there should i say that doesn't exist in here which is not great so if i just click ok you see the line change i'll save that change then I'll go into the sales table, but now I can put customer ID 12. It's let me do that so far. Bread buns, 11, and, look, and I can tab off the record. So it's now letting me do that, which is not great because there isn't a customer ID number 12. If I go back into customers, there's only 10 customers. Now, now that the reason there was more than 10 in there is because one of the customers had more than one transaction. That he's got three three transactions there come out of this but watch what happens now then when i go back into this relationship if i double click on that and tick this box enforce referential integrity that is not going to let me do it because the rules are already broken let's see what happens yeah you can't create this relationship because there's already what i call orphan records in this is a customer in there that shouldn't be in there so it's not letting me do it and when i see a database design like that that raises alarm bells with me because I'm thinking um, they've set this up without checking that and now they've got orphan records. So what I'm going to do is go back into that sales table and delete this guy, number 12, get rid of him. Okay, so everything's back as it was. Close that down. Let's see if I can do it now. Can I tick this? Okay. Now it lets me do it because there's no orphan record. So that's just four ways that you can, four features that you can use to stop inaccurate data entry in Microsoft Access. So we looked at doing a lookup list. We've looked at rules on across tables between two fields and then single rules on a field and then forcing um, this one here, referential integrity to be activated, which is something you must, I think you should do for every single link that you do okay so that's all i want to talk about in this little video thank you for your time i'll catch you on the next one